This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mankini and Barbecue Company. Mankini Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our ba- barbecue will take your barbecue from good <laughs> to great. Ooh. Our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Let's try that again. Uh, the Mad Canadian will be at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria this Thursday from 4 to 7, Cary, Ohio, of course, for some barbecue and bingo. Again, OLC Shrine Cafeteria, 4 to 7, barbecue and bingo. Be there next week at next Thursday. Uh, be sure to hit up his social media, Facebook and Twitter, for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sluka is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle's not wearing the Christmas hat this time, but it is still Christmas season. This is coming out on Black Friday. Um, if if the Iron Bean Coffee Company is doing a Black Friday sale, I'm not aware of it. But you can still go pick out some amazing coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com. Um, all of there is a Marine veteran-owned company based out of Ohio. Integrity all the way from the farm to the customer. All of the beans are fair trade certified, which means you're getting the most moral and upstanding beans you can possibly get. Um, and all of the beans are fresh roasted to order. They're not sitting, getting stale, losing their oils and losing their flavors, sitting on a shelf somewhere, which means you, the customer, are getting the best possible bean that you can get. That integrity from farm to table. What, what else could you possibly want? So you can find your very new favorite coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. How's it going, YouTube? How's it going, Slipcats in the channel? Hello, YouTube in Steed. In Steed? Did I just say in Steed? You did. Uh, It is our Sloop (gasps) episode. It is it is revelry week, so we got a got a lot of good games this week. Yeah. So, we, but we also for reasons we discussed I in I didn't say great. I said good games. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, for reasons we discussed in the Thursday episode, we have two guest pickers this week, so we better get to it, Kyle. Sorry, Austin. <laughs> We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right. How are you doing today, Jared? Oh, you know, I'm I'm over here uh, hurting Austin by giving him uh, life advice before the show started. Uh, sorry about that, Austin. Um, Austin, to be fair, though, you started a podcast recently, so I think you're only now just becoming aware of your quarter life crisis. <laughs> so you already started your quarter life crisis. You're just aware of it now. That's one of the that, that's what that's the leading cause of podcasting is quarter life crisis. Just ask Kyle and I. <laughs> All right, Jared. Let's get right into it. We have six games to pick from today. Uh, if you want to hear about the game, listen to our Thursday's episode where we do a breakdown. Talk about. Um, the inside of the game and answer a lot of questions. So be sure to hit up our Thursday episode to listen more about the Ohio state and the team up North game. But now Jared to summarize, the- however, we all picked Ohio state to both win and cover all four of us. Cause we have two guest pickers this week for reasons that I explained in the Thursday episode. So if you want to understand why we have, if you care, if you care, if you don't just continue listening, but if you care, we have two guest pickers this week. Yep. All right. And we're going to start. Off with Iowa and Nebraska. Now, this is a little. Is it, this uh, th- things happened here? Things happened here when we locked it in. Nebraska is a three and a half point favorite. Now that's changed, where Iowa is now favored. But we locked them in at Nebraska at three and a half. And Lisa say Jared. That that definitely swayed me to to pick Iowa to cover in this game. Yeah. Um. Nebraska started as a three and a half point favorite. And because our CBS picks locked in at that time, they're still a three and a half point favorites, uh, according to us. But the it has swung, depending upon which casino you're looking at, basically to a pick'em. Um 
it's it's maybe it's a half point this way or a half point that way or a full point this way or a full point that way, just depending upon where you're looking. Um, but the bottom line here is that it swung. So therefore, Iowa just looks like the better bet right now. It is. And we kind of danced around here. It's because of Martinez ruled out this game. So his career is officially over at Nebraska. So that 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 definitely hurts a lot for Nebraska's offense here. So I have no idea what their backup situation is. Uh, does it? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying, does it? All right. All right. So let's see. Austin here says he picks Iowa. How is a three and an eight team, a three and a half paper, a three and a half point favor over the number 17 team in the country. Nebraska, Nebraska is the best worst team I have ever seen because of this. The game will be close. Nebraska, I think, will pull a shocker, but it'll be late. I'll take Nebraska to win, but give me the points. Nebraska, 20 to 17. And Dinger says Scott Frost will lead the nation, will lead the nation's best eight loss team to another incredibly frustrating close loss in, in the Corn Bowl. Keyword is close. I'll take Nebraska and the points. All right, there we go. Uh, right, I, I, I did notice that you said eight lost team, which, which tipped your hand to what you were doing there. So that was yes. appreciated. All right. All right. Next game here. One of the three undefeated teams left Cincinnati heading on over to East Carolina. If I didn't which have, is where I didn't Kyle, have, you're, you're, you're our resident yeah, North Carolina it, it, it correspondent. Is, it is in East Carolina. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Southern Florida uh, is in Central I, Florida, so it's it is I, worth noting. If I noting. didn't have, if I didn't have, nah, who am I kidding? I wouldn't even. I was going to say maybe tempted to go to this game since it's only an hour hour away from me, but I'd be too busy watching another game beforehand. But either way, well, no, this is, a, is a no, Kyle, Kyle. This is a Nebraska game on oh, Friday. This is Friday. This is Friday. Oh crap! You this could is have. Friday. You could, could have. If I didn't have fam- if I didn't have family here. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, Cincinnati is a 13 and a half point favorite over East Carolina and Jared. This yeah. is a, this is a statement game, another yep. statement game that Cincinnati needs to win here. Um, Fickle is just going to come out lights out and just blow East Carolina away here. I, I, I just don't see this being a close one at all. I, I'll take Cincinnati here. Hey, hey, chat! Keep us updated on that basketball game. Your 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 basketball chat in the chat is appreciated. Um, the yeah, I the Fickle has to win big. There's a motivating factor here for Cincinnati for Fickle to not just win these games but win these games impressively. Therefore, he needs to he needs to put the points up. He absolutely needs to score and put up a big margin of victory. And 13 and a half, quite frankly, isn't even enough. Like if you want an impressive victory over Eastern Carolina, who quite frankly is not, I mean, they're seven and four, they're five and two in conference, but so they're not, they're not a terrible team from the American, but still, you you need to win this game impressively, and I don't think impressively is thirteen points. Okay, all right. Austin says here, do I Austin, care? Austin, it's not, not really. the, they're they're not bad. Austin, they're a seven and four football team. I mean, yeah. they're a seven and four football team from the American, but they're still a seven and four football team. That's not bad. All right. Austin says, do I care? Not really. Since he is good, and I like Fick, so that's good enough for me. Since he wins forty-two to twenty. And then Dinger chimes in with Cincinnati has been more cat playing with their food than bear mauling teams. The season in East Carolina is low key, not awful. I expect Cincy to win by 13 and a half, but I expect Cincy to win, but 13 and a half is too rich for me. I will take East Carolina and the points. All right, so All right. everyone thinks Cincinnati's going to win, but we have a difference in opinion, um, at, at least from Dinger's standpoint, uh, if yep. if there's a cover there or not. All right, yep. Kyle, what's yep. next? All right, we got the Iron Bowl. 
We got the Iron Bowl of Alabama and Auburn. This is in Auburn this year. And Alabama is a 19 and a half point favorite in this game. I'll go ahead and start. And I think 19 and a half is too rich for me, especially for how we've seen Alabama play this year. They're playing very close games. Um, I think in almost half of their games, almost half of the games, they've been, it's been very close. And I expect this to be another uh, close game here. Yes, Nomad, Auburn is garbage, but I think rivalry, rivalry games always brings out the best and even in bad teams here. I, I think it's going is, to be closer is, than, 19, than 19 and a half points. Is Bo Nix being out a bad thing? <laughs> Uh, no, hear me out. Auburn recruits not 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 fantastically. They're they're not, but they're they're a good recruiting team. And the next guy, there's no film on him, right? Maybe that's the magic that they need. And I'm just nineteen and a half. Just feels like too much. Mm -hmm. Night. It just it's too much. Um. I, I feel this game being like, I don't know, 42 to 28. Like, I feel like this is like a 42 to 28 game. That That's just where I'm feeling this, which is just not a cover. Yep. Yep. All right. Austin says Auburn to cover as is tradition. It just means more. Alabama wins 34 to 24. And Dinger says the red elephants at the Catbirds. Did Auburn clone a healthy Bo Nix? No. Alabama is Alabama to cover as Bryce Young makes his Heisman statement. At least that's what ESPN will tell us. <laughs> but but Jared. Yeah. Th th this means that um that Stroud should win the Heisman because he doesn't have an elite he doesn't have elite wide receivers to throw to because I mean, stop, just stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it. It's, it's <laughs> fine. If, if listen, if the Blindikoff wants to completely delegitimize itself or reveal itself as nothing but a stats based award, then, then let it, I, I'm not going to waste any emotional energy on the Blitnikoff. That that is three games here, Jared. So let's uh, let's do one more. Yeah, let's, let's do, one, do more. one more. Let's do one more. All right, all right. We got the battle of the the. I guess it's the big. What do we call it? The the big North West. West. The big North division. comma West. Not to be confused <laughs> yeah. with the big North West. It's the big North comma West. And that is Wisconsin. Heading on over to Minnesota. And Wisconsin is a six and a half point favorite. And I think this line is perfect. I think there's a perfect line here. Because I could see it either way. Are we going to see the Wisconsin that we've seen in recent weeks where they look above average? Or or are they or are they the Wisconsin that we've seen in the beginning year, which I don't think they are, but or, or they just no. their offense just looked terrible here. Minnesota Minnesota could take advantage here, but I think this is going to be a really good game. But, but I still I still have I still have Wisconsin to cover, not by much here, but I think six and a half points is a really good line. So I'll, I'll take Wisconsin to cover here. Honest to God, Kyle, this this line is is real good. Um, if it was seven and a half. I may have still taken Wisconsin, but uh, six and a half. I am going to take Wisconsin. Uh, I think the line's that good. Uh, it's, I it's just it's less than a touchdown. Like that's that's really what it comes down to for me. Wisconsin has finally found its stride. If you look at their past four games. Uh, they beat Nebraska by seven points. And like, of course, because no one beats Nebraska by more than 17 or seven points, unless you're Ohio State, right? Uh, they embarrassed Northwestern. Northwestern's not good this year, granted. They t they ran Rutgers right off the field, 52 to three. And they beat Iowa by 20 points. 
Like, with the exception of Nebraska, and Nebraska's the exception. No one beats Nebraska by a ton of points. Nebraska yeah. does not count in this equation. They've won all of their recent games, uh, even throw Purdue into that equation, which is the game before Iowa, by more than seven points. So, therefore, yes, I will I will take Wisconsin to both win and cover. All right. And technically, right. they would have covered this line against Nebraska, too, because it was seven points, and this is six and a half. All right. Austin here says, is Wisconsin good? Their whole season has confused me, and I genuinely cannot decide whether or not I think they're a good football team. I think they're just good enough to not beat good teams, but can edge out average ones. Minnesota is an average team. The number is good. But six and a half is not enough. Barely. Wisconsin wins 23 to 16, which is a cover. And then Dinger says, in a game with all the excitement of cheese curds covered in gravy, go with the team that has a superior running back. Also go watch something else. Wisconsin to cover. There you go. All right, Kyle. I believe that uh, means it is time for an ad break. All right. Um, let, let me go ahead and start off with the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I mentioned at the beginning, OLC Shrine next Thursday. Carry four to seven barbecue bingo. Be there. Uh, now as for some reviews here. Um, we get someone here saying that they were referred. Um, they were referred from somebody to go try some of the Mad Canadian. Said this is the best barbecue I've had in a long time. Um, this. This barbecue cannot be missed. Another saying the brisket was absolutely delicious. Sides were very good. Five stars from all of us. And we have another one with some fish tacos. Yes, he actually has fish tacos and he has it with street corn. And they say it's amazing. Uh, their, their husband got ribs and brisket and was fantastic as well. Slaw and potato salads were the bomb. Highly recommend to all. With great reviews like these, how could you not head on over to the Mad Canadian food truck and get some of that delicious barbecue? Again, next Thursday, 4 to 7, Cary, Ohio, barbecue and bingo. Be sure to follow him on social media for more information about him and his food truck and where he'll be heading to next. Next, Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, who are the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is an Ohio-based uh, just outside of Toledo in Perrysburg, Ohio, uh, based coffee company, uh, Marine veteran owned and operated. Uh, taking a look, last episode, we we looked at some of the flavored coffees. Taking a quick peek over here at the non-flavored coffees. And Kyle, we got, we got a little bit of a sale. We got a little bit of a sale happening, uh, at least at the time of this record. Um, the drink from the skull of your enemy, $2 off. The cast iron which is a medium roast coffee, $2 off. The drink from the skull of your enemy, by the way, it's a, a dark coffee. Uh, the Integrity, which is like their specialty espresso. It doesn't have to be an espresso, but that's if you like espresso, this is their recommended bean, uh, $2 off. The Thor, which is a medium dark coffee, $2 off. The Fear No Evil, which is a black roast coffee, $2 off. Kyle, the Loki is the lightest coffee they have. It's a light venturing into the territory of a medium um, by light standards. It's kind of dark by medium standards. It's kind of light. You want to guess how much it's off? $2. Uh, the Odin, because like you can't, you can't put Thor and Loki on sale without also putting Lo Odin on sale. Am I right? Am I right? I'm right. Also on sale. Also Kyle, $2 off. That's right. I'm handing out $2 bills to everyone. I, I guess actually the iron bean coffee company is so, uh, if you want to find your new favorite coffee and save yourself $2 or so, uh, you can do so by heading over to ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What game is next, Kyle? Next game, we have the Battle of the Oklahomas. Oklahoma heading on over to Oklahoma State. It's a 730 kickoff. And the Cowboys in orange are a three and a half point favorite. Who do you got in this game, Jared? It's Bedlam, man. It's Bedlam. Uh, this game's really interesting from a you know like playoff perspective. Both of these teams um, on the fringe of making it to the playoffs. 
depending upon how this game ends, depending upon who wins, this could be matchup one of two. They could meet again in the Big 12 championship game, but also Baylor might. So we'll, 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 we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but to me, Kyle, you have two rivals, both playing for a playoff spot, both playing for a conference championship game. I just, I got to take the points and run. That's it. I got to take the points and run. Oklahoma is the dog in this game by three and a half points. I am taking the points and I'm walking away. That's, that's where I'm going. You know, I, I don't think I've ever said this about a big 12 team, Jared. Yeah. But I'm going to go with the team who has a good defense. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to go with the Cowboys to cover here. Uh, three and a half. Yeah, it's venturing on. It's definitely not a pick em game, obviously, but it's still not enough to scare me. I think Oklahoma State could win by a touchdown, maybe 10 points, but I have a good feeling about these Cowboys and their defense here and really shutting down Oklahoma, who have struggled against far less... Um, teams. Yeah, I'm looking. Look, looking. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll take the Cowboys here to cover. Kyle, this might be as far as this might be one of the lowest over unders I've seen for an Oklahoma for a bi- at least a Big Twelve Oklahoma game in a very long time. Do you want to take a quick guess? Where do you think well, the over under for this game is? If you're saying it's low, I'm going to say. 59 lower. Oh, wow. Yes. Again, 51 lower. Wow. Wow. What is it, Jared? 49 and a half. Take the over in that one. (laughs) I think so. Uh, But yeah, they're basically saying these teams are only going to score 25 points each. Um, Yeah. It's shocking. What happened to my big 12? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, all right. Austin says Bedlam. This game is usually fun, whether or not the game will actually be good. But I think this year will might be slightly different as Oklahoma State is actually playing defense in the Big 12. Crazy, I know. But what the over under is, take the under. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I am betting on Oklahoma continuing to have s- sputtering offense and for Oklahoma State to continue having a stifling defense. I'll take Oklahoma Stifling? State 28. I can't read that. The pixels are too too low for me. I'll take Oklahoma State 28 to 17. And Dinger says, people who quickly claim land to establish ranches at their employees. Part of me says Oklahoma State loves to lose to their betters. However, the rest of me watched Caleb and Rattler play in a few games. And what I expect to be in expect to be a cringe filled contest i'll take the cowboys to cover next up kyle uh we have notre dame and stanford this is our final sloop pick of the week um we have notre dame uh traveling to stanford notre dame is a 17 and one half point favorite who do you have in this one i got notre dame i don't i don't really like Stanford and similar to like Cincinnati it's it's a this is their last game and their last opportunity to make a statement to the committee here and if chaos were to happen the next couple weeks here Notre Dame needs to go out on a high note here so I'm going to take Notre Dame to cover that 17 and a half Notre Dame's last few games Granted, Georgia Tech sucks. They beat Georgia Tech 55 to nothing. Virginia, who's a, a decent ACC team, 28 to 3. Navy, who makes a lot of teams look bad, uh, they won that game 34 to 6. They're winning games, and they're winning games by decent margins right now. I think this is a better Notre Dame, Notre Dame team now than versus what we saw from the beginning of the year. And I think there is a decent chance that Notre Dame potentially works their way into the playoffs. They, they need the big 12 to play out in such a way that no, that there's not a one win champion there. Man. And they, they need, they need Georgia to just 
destroy Bama and make sure make sure Bama doesn't make the playoffs. And then I think Notre Dame has a chance to actually make the playoffs. I I, I think it's an outside chance. It's not a great chance, but it does exist, and they know it, and they know they need to not just win this game, but look look like a playoff team in this football game. You're not you're not getting much love in the. Uh, in the I I don't, I don't care what they 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 hate they love to hate me. That that's they <laughs> love to hate me. All right, all right. Let's see what our pickers say. Austin has Notre Dame, and he says this is the Nerd Bowl. Andrew Luck went to Stanford, and he used to play for my Colts. Quentin Nelson went to Notre Dame, and he does play for my Colts. Easy pick. Notre Dame <laughs> wins 38-14. to 14. And then Dinger says, wealthy folklore elves at Sequoia Sempervirens. Okay. <laughs> uh, after a lengthy conversation. With I, my I think that's Notre Sequoia. Dame, the first one's Sequoia, but I can't help you on the second one. Um, with my anti Notre Dame bias, I can say <laughs> I foresee no version of this game where Notre Dame doesn't play down to Stanford, having spent the last week huffing themselves up on their Georgia Tech win. I will take Stanford in the points here. <laughs> now, now uh, they're going after you in the chat for your inability to pronounce words. I, I, as I, is tradition, as is tradition, of course. Um, I, 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 I've been staring at the second. Is that, is that like the Latin name for the, for the, for the tree? Is that what that is? Is that what I'm seeing there? I don't know. Uh, but Sequoia, I, I at least know that okay. one. Okay. I can't Sequoia. help you with the second. I can't help you with the second one. All right. We're good there, Jared. All okay. Right. All right. Let's get into some ask Luke cast questions here. Who's your Buckeye Zach starts off. Would you have ranked Sparty above Oregon based solely on their loss being to the now number two Buckeyes? Or does the committee still perceive Oregon's win over us in week two grandier, even though even after the low ranked Utah anni annihilation? Or do we even care because it is 11 and 12? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm you gonna... gave me a you gave me a parachute at the end of that question, and I'm gonna pull the cord on it. I don't care. It's yeah, it's it's I, two lost it's two lost teams. I don't care. Yeah, it's yeah same. I'm in the same boat there. It doesn't really matter. It's eleven and twelve. Doesn't matter if you flip them around. It really doesn't. All right, Kabuto asks us, Jared. Should but, but hold on, they... real quick, real real quick. Just looking at that, what you're talking about right there is the transitive property and. I mean, no, it's not. It's not because it's a common opponent. Common opponent isn't transitive property. Um, you know what? Who cares? Sorry, I, I liked. I liked my better. I like. I liked my first answer better. All right, all right, Kabuto. Should they just live broadcast the CFP committee discussions and fire Gary Barda? I'd watch. Um, as we've learned with C-SPAN. Uh, making it transparent doesn't necessarily make it better. Um, cause then, then you just have a lot of grandstanding and people performing for the cameras and so on and so forth and yada, yada, yada. Um, and by the way, the, Gary Bart is not doing anything wrong. It's actually just impossible. His job's impossible. Let's be very clear his job's impossible. The task he is being given, which is to go on television and give a one to two sentence synopsis of the opinions of 13 people is an impossible task. It is absolutely impossible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't watch it because. Yeah. Sounds boring. I would, I would not watch it. It, yeah, sounds it does boring. sound boring. It does sound boring. All right, Jared, that, that is actually all the questions we have for, for today's episode. You got anything left? I got nothing in the tank, Kyle. <laughs> just staring at just staring at you, Jared. I'm just staring at you. you 
I can't believe you let that happen. I, I, I said I have nothing left, and you proceeded to just stare at me. How do you let that happen? Ask Sloopcast, say fuck Michigan. There you go. Fuck Michigan. There you go. Kyle's cursing right. because parents are in the house. <laughs> <laughs> all right jerry let's uh, go ahead and end this episode all right um can i get a basketball update in the chat you guys a little bit of help um i i asked the chat not you kyle shut up okay. <laughs> 16 13 ha <sighs> All right. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's that's the, come hang out in their Discord server. It's fun. We like it. Other people seem to like it. Come hang out in our Discord server. Um, Patreon, give us money. Gimme, 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 gimme. No. <laughs> uh, most of the most of the stuff uh, that we earn on Patreon, we put back into the. We're still paying for the computers and the cameras and the microphones and everything else. Um, that, that we upgraded when we went to video, we're still trying to pay for that stuff. There's more stuff we'd like to buy, um, to improve the quality of the show, to keep this thing going and to, you know, sort of just get some money back on the hours of time per week that we put into this. So if you got three bucks a month, if you got $32, uh, for an entire year, of contribution to the show. If you feel like we've given you that much value of entertainment, may maybe consider throwing it back, throwing back some, some money our way. That would be appreciated. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I really don't. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm just going to save for the Buckeye game, but it started so late. Yeah. So no, unfor unfortunately I don't. And of course, everybody wants everybody in the chat wants to talk about my chair, but I'm just gonna leave that in in the well, chat well, discussion well. there. Yeah, we, we don't we don't we don't talk about that. All right. Um, if you want to learn the secrets of Kyle's chair, join our Discord server at discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, <laughs> uh, tonight's ending music, Kyle. Uh, let's see. We 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 played a we played in Ohio State guy on the tuesday episode we played ohio state legends the dead shambecklers on the thursday episode and kyle we're going back to the ohio state well and we are going oh i could have gone oar you're right i could have done that but i'm not uh mechadon actually played for the team so i'm gonna do that so um mechadon mechadon uh will be ending today's show so kyle with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mecca Dawn. Mm -hmm.